Hello, everyone. You know, I thought about doing this video just this morning, actually, because since we were doing matrices yesterday, um, it just occurred to me. I said, why don't I show my audience on YouTube how I actually teach my students, uh, the ones I have here at City Tutoring, how to solve from a different perspective a system of equations. And I guarantee you, and if you say otherwise, I know you're lying because I know this for a fact. Remember, I'm in the in the educational world for a long time. Uh, I know for a fact that your high school teachers do not do this. Uh, in fact, I venture to say that not even your college instructors do this, uh, especially not certainly not if you are in a community college, uh, but even arguably in some of the state schools. I don't know, but you can tell me if you are in college. Let me know in the comment sections, as you always do. Uh, if your instructors or your professors actually take this approach in college algebra or um, other math courses. But uh, so, you know, some of you gentlemen, you still solve equations with the elegance of a chimpanzee playing a harpsichord. And we want to depart from the flat, flavorless math you know, the typical math of do this and do that. We will not substitute. We will not eliminate. We will not draw little boxes with a highlighter. Like you're following some recipe for microwaved mediocrity. You're going to learn how to solve a system of a system of equations, linear equations, in a very different way from what you are taught in schools today. They used to teach it, by the way. I know that that's why I know this, because one of the things that I was blessed with, I did have a very rigorous math instructor when I was in high school. So that that's part of the reason why I was inspired to become a mathematician. And in fact, if you read my biography, which you can get online, uh, you can buy it at Amazon. I, and I think they have an electronic copy. It's called Mathematician to Mathematician. You can look it up, mathematician to mathematician. That is how, uh, it's a story of how I became uh, a mathematician. And that should answer the question. Some of you asked me, uh, what should I do to become this and that? I think if you read my story, you'll see it, it might serve as an, I'm not saying for everyone, but it might serve as an inspiration to you. And I know you've been uh, raised in the church of the algorithm. You've been told all your life that math is some chore a series of uh, memorized rituals that if you follow the steps and bubble in the answers, you'll be college ready. I, it's one of the expressions that really bothers me. College ready. What does that even mean? What does it mean? Because if you ask 10 people, they will all give you a, a different answer. But the methods that you've learned so far, assuming you've even learned systems of equations, I wouldn't be surprised if you have not touched upon it at all, even at the Algebra 2 level, some some places. Uh, but substitution, that's for the, that's okay, but it's not imaginative. It's certainly not, it's just a procedure. So is elimination. Even matrices are, as you saw yesterday, they are a proceed, they are procedural in nature, although they do have interesting properties. And I know for a fact that some of you were tempted to simply ask an AI to solve the problems for you. I already know, I see it, it, it in my students. Some of you are, are falling into that temptation. You are always one click away from summoning the all-knowing so-called, the oracle, the soulless demon of convenience. But let me ask you this. Do you want to know math? Or do you just want the illusion of knowing it? If you just want to use AI, you shouldn't be on this channel. This is not for you. Because clearly you don't care to know math properly. If you, if all you're going to do is plug things into AI, you're wa you're wasting my time. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your money. Because if imitation is the sincerest uh, form, if it's the most sincere form of flattery, then you already know where to turn. I know that for a fact. You already have a channel that flatters you all. The person, and again, I won't say the name because then people will accuse me of all sorts of stupid things. But you know who I'm referring to. If you're smart, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you like that, go ahead. If you like to turn real math 
pure math into motivational mush and then bottling it all that junk into 500 or more ai written ebooks with titles like oh the beautiful journey of basic algebra how to love even if you how to love even if you don't know any math i, I can't even remember the, the titles gentlemen that's not mathematics it's a hallmark card that is taped to a textbook at best you cannot become a mathematician or pass my courses that's for sure by watching motivational sermons written by ai by the way on youtube by a person who solves problems with the energy of some mediocre almost creepy guidance counselor we're not here to love in that sense we are here to dominate math to unsheath the the the, the properties like gentlemen should do we have to tame a lot of the natural world around us you are not i'm not interested in cogs in the machine i'm not interested in flashcard regurgitators this channel is for people who truly truly take things especially math but also god seriously so let's get to work on this example uh, and see what you think of this method all right there's going to be two theorems for today but here's the first theorem for today and i hope you know this by now non-parallel lines in the plane in the coordinate plane have a unique point of intersection and we normally call that when you determine the intersection of two lines uh, we call it solving simultaneous systems of linear in this case equations in two variables and typically you learn you learn this method in school either uh, they call it either elimination uh, or substitution and in other places they uh, they have you gra uh, graph right and when then you graph the point of intersection and that's it it's all plug and chug it's nonsense um they do have their utility of course it all depends on what you're doing it for i'm not disparaging it completely i'm just saying that we're going to look at an alternative way to um to understand this so first i want you to try your traditional method right i want you to solve this by a system of equations a system of linear equations uh using either the system of elimination or substitution or you know i'm not even going to mention calculator because I, it's just not but i know some of you might do that uh, but then once you get your solution um we're going to compare it to the other method that we're going to show you all right here is what is happening here you have what we call in math a compound sentence so you have um it's it, we use the word and if you look at the logic videos that i uh, made a few months ago and i haven't finished with that series either but there's just always so much to do but i did mention what a compound sentence was i also mentioned what a conjunction was and a disjunction but anyway, and you have here a compound sentence. This is how I teach my students at City Tutoring, by the way. This is the approach that we take. And, uh, and of course, we also learn elimination, of course, but those are mundane elementary things. Um, but this is equivalent to something called what we call a vector equation. I also covered vectors several months ago. So you need to look up those. If you don't know vectors, then this makes no sense. But you need to look up those videos uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So this, you can write the system in this way into this vector equation you see on the board. And you can also write it equivalent. You can make it equivalent to 2 comma 5x minus 3 comma 7y equals 4 negative 2. Now there's something called the inner product. If you take the inner product of each member, and I put it in capital letters because you should know what the vocabulary is, all equations have a member. So you have uh, the member of these of this equation. Uh, you take these uh, the first with three comma seven. That p means perpendicular, right? So if it's perpendicular, the coordinates become negative seven three. I'm going to show you why in a moment. 
And then with 2, 5 perpendicular, the perpendicular of that is negative 5, 2. So we um, establish, we set it up in this way. And how did I get those coordinates, though? If you're not familiar with how I got those coordinates, it's fair enough. I will explain it to you. All right. So this is the this is the algebra behind it. Let's see if I can show you. So two vectors are perpendicular if their dot product is zero. Right. So you should be familiar with dot products at least. So you have here a vector, 3, 7, and you want to find a vector, w, so that when you multiply them, the dot part, you get 0. So you can write this as in this way, which really means 3x plus 7y equals 0. And then you would solve uh, like a linear equation, solve for, in this case, solve for y. And you get, uh, actually, it should be negative 3 sevens, not, not just a negative 3, but the fraction, negative 3 sevens x. And this is going to show you that the relationship between x and y is going to be, is perpendicular to 3, 7. Uh, so that's kind of the algebra behind it, in case you were lost as how I got my numbers. But there is a, if you're ready, uh, there is a shortcut, obviously. I mean, this is kind of the algebraic way, which you should know. But if you take a vector, any vector, a, b, we'll call it, then the perpendicular vector is either going to be negative b a or b negative a and the reason for that is because you're just um rotating you're rotating at 90 degrees so that's kind of algebra's way of turning your head so hopefully that makes sense and then we can continue with uh, the rest of this and the other theorem so here you have um x equals by the dot product negative 34 one x minus zero times y gives you uh negative 34 and then if you work out the second part here you will get y is equal to negative 24 have a look at the work to see uh where all of this is coming from so really the only uh possible solution of the original system of equations is negative 34 for x and negative 24. And you can always, of course, check by substituting as you as you would do um, in standard form. Um, but there you have it. So in general, we could say that a system can be written as follows, right? We're going to talk about uh, the determinant now because we didn't really talk about it uh, yesterday, but I, I figured it, it's actually very relevant to talk about the determinant here. So in general, the system that we just saw can be written in vector form. This is the, 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 the formal way of putting it. So I just want to, if you want to take notes, you can. And you can use this method to prove that uh, the determinant, that if the determinant does not equal zero, then you have the given system that you have is equivalent to x and y as you see here. But it's important to note, if d equals zero, then you've got either parallel lines or coincidence, we call them. No, you don't learn that in school. I know that for a fact. They don't say, they don't use that term, but we do. And your system therefore has either no solution or infinitely many solutions. And now we uh, have to talk about one more theorem, which is the determinant. That's a separate theorem. All right, so in general, we have a theorem here. If the system that we just saw, uh, it, it will have a unique solution if and only if the determinant does not equal zero. If the determinant does not equal zero, the solution is one over D. And I should have add here, you know, the the deter it's one over d and then parentheses the determinant and the system, right? But I didn't have, I didn't want to make it too messy. But um, now, see if you can solve this using determinants, and see what you come up with. All right. So earlier we talked about this. We said 
to give a roster of the solution of this system, right? So what, what we do is we, well, let's put them in customary form, right? This, you, this first equation can be written as 5x minus 3y equals 2, and then x plus 2y equals 7. And then we get the determinant here, right, which is 5, negative 3, and then 1 and 2. Those are the coefficients. And in order for you to calculate the, uh, the determinant, you had a, you're going to multiply 5 times 2, which is 10, minus 1 times negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, but it's a minus, so therefore it's plus. 10 plus 3 is 13. 13 does not equal 0, obviously. And therefore, we know that we are going to have a system, uh, a solution to the system of equations. Now, before we get into, I may as well show you now, um, because I had it here. This is what I was trying to put up earlier, right? This, I'm going to circle it and box it in red, right? When you're doing, when you're solving, it's one over the determinant, but remember that we labeled each part, right? So we have C1, right? A sub one, uh, when you have a system of equations in two variables, this is where the, these uh, letters come from. So if you watched the video earlier, you'll know uh, where I got this from. So uh, what, what, it, what each part is referring to. So going back, so for X, we already determined that the determinant is 13. So we have to put one over the determinant. So it's one over 13 times this, right? And in order for you to get this, you get 25, you end up with one over 13 times four plus 21, right? Because seven times negative three is negative 21, but there's a minus sign. So there's a, it becomes a plus. Four plus 21 is 25. 25 over 13 is the value of X. Now we do it for Y. We set it up in the same way, and we get 33 over 13. And we said to put it in roster form, so therefore you can put it within braces, and it looks like this. All right? So I hope that if, if this video was helpful to you, you saw a different perspective, a different way to do things. If it was helpful, then you have no choice. you got to subscribe to this channel. Please continue to help us grow. Let's get up to 100,000 people or more. We are growing every day. And thank God for that because we have a proper understanding. We want to foster a proper understanding of not just mathematics, but life in general. There is a proper way and an improper way to do things. So if this was helpful, like I said, please continue to support the channel. I've tried my best. But uh, it is quite challenging because uh, it's all this tech and things are new to me. But it is worth it. Uh, thank God that I have the audience that I have because you are all committed to excellence and you're all committed to uh, a better world, a better planet. So that is always uh, a much uh, that's always very encouraging. Thank you all. And we'll be in touch soon because there are other there's another video probably coming up today.